morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. These are difficult and trying times. We've never experienced anything quite like it before. More than ever, we need divine help and guidance, and it is available. Wherever you are this morning, you are not alone. You may be self-isolating, but you are not alone. God is with you. I want to share with you a psalm from God's Bible. Psalm 142. I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out before him my complaint. Before him I tell my trouble. When my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watch over my way in the path where I walk. People have hidden a snare for me. Look and see, there is no one at my right hand. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for my life. I cry to you, Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison, that I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. No matter how you feel this morning, no matter what your circumstances may be, God is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you today knowing that we need divine help and guidance. We've never experienced this kind of situation in our life. We've never been up against it in the way that we are right now. This is different. But we know that you are not surprised. You know the way, and you will be with us. Help us this morning, Father, as we share via the electronic age in a way that is unusual for us. Help us to sense your presence with us where we are and to know your peace. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I chose as our theme for today going boldly where no one has gone before. Now, some of you will recognize that I have borrowed that theme from the early Star Trek series. I think in the first series they said, boldly going or going boldly where no man has gone before. And then by the time they came out with the second series, they were just a little more politically correct. And they said, boldly going where no one has gone before. Interestingly, uh, everywhere they went in the galaxy, they seemed to keep running into people who were already there before them, but that's neither here nor there. The fact is, though, that we can go with boldness and confidence into the unknown future because God is with us. I have chosen as our text for this morning a verse from Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah, way back when, wrote some words that seem to really hold a lot of promise for us today. This is God speaking through his prophet, God, Yahweh, our Father. I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn darkness into light before them and make rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. Isn't it good to have that word from God? He's going to lead us, although we are going blind, in a sense, into the future, and we are going in a way that we have not known before, along an unfamiliar path, we can be confident of his guidance. This is God's plan for our self-confidence. He will turn the darkness into light before us. He'll make the rough places smooth. 
He says these are the things that he will do. He says that he will not forsake us. Well, today I would like to do something just a little bit different. We're going to read a Bible story. And this Bible story I'm going to read to you from the Message Bible because it comes across more as a story. It is a historical event. This tells about a healing that Jesus accomplished way back when he was here walking among us on earth. But the story holds lessons and principles that apply to us in our day as well. Remember, the Bible has already told us that though we're going blind into the future, we have a guide who will provide us with a light and help us in the darkness. John chapter 9, the Gospel. Walking down the street, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, teacher, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? Let's just stop there for a moment. It seems ridiculous, doesn't it, to think that uh, this man might have done something to bring about his blindness since his blindness happened before he was even born. Isn't it strange how when things are wrong, we look for someone to blame? They wanted to blame somebody. Was it this man's fault? Or was it his parents' fault? The fact is that it was nobody's fault. Yes, we do know that sin is the cause of suffering and sickness, but the people who experience things like blindness or coronavirus are no worse sinners than any of the rest of us, are they? Let's go on. Jesus said, you're asking the wrong question. You're looking for someone to blame. There is no such cause effect here. And get this. Look instead for what God can do. Isn't it interesting? We see things as problems. God sees them as opportunities to do something wonderful. Jesus goes on. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here. Working while the sun shines. When night falls, the work day is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the world's light. Isn't it good to know that Jesus is the light of the world? He offers his light, his guidance to all who look to him. And then Jesus did a very unusual thing. As we go back to the story, Jesus said this, and then he spit in the dust. He made a clay paste with his saliva, and he rubbed that paste on the blind man's eyes. Wow. Talk about a different way to do a miracle. Very often, Jesus simply spoke, and the miracle was performed. At other times, he touched the person whom he was healing. But this time, he puts a paste of mud on the eyes of a man born blind and gives him this instruction. Go wash at the pool of Salom. Salom means scent. Now, the pool was called scent because it's the place that the water was sent when it came into Jerusalem through the conduit, which had been constructed in earlier years. But here, it's very appropriate because this man is being sent to the pool of Siloam. He's to go and wash this mud paste off his eyes. And the Bible says, the man went and washed and saw. Incredible. Soon the town was buzzing. No wonder. His relatives and those who year after year had seen him as a blind man begging were saying, why, isn't this the man we knew who sat here and begged? Others said, it's him all right. But others objected. It's not the same man at all. It just looks like him. Isn't that interesting? It's sometimes hard to believe, even when we see it with our own eyes, isn't it? The man said, it's me, the very one. 
And he said, how did your eyes get opened? He said, a man named Jesus made a paste and rubbed it on my eyes and told me, go to Salome and wash. I did what he said, when I washed, I saw. Now this man had never seen Jesus. He didn't even know what Jesus looked like. He was blind. But a man named Jesus told him to go and wash. He did what Jesus said, and the result was healing, restoration of his sight. Isn't it amazing? Although sometimes we feel we can't see Jesus clearly, if we just do what he says, we will get the result that he promised. When I washed, I saw, the man said. So where is he? They asked. That is, where is Jesus? And he replied, I don't know. You see, Jesus had sent him to the pool. Jesus didn't go with him to the pool. The people marched the man to the Pharisees. The Pharisees were a very strict religious group, and they were a little uncomfortable, or sometimes very uncomfortable, with anyone whose faith varied or differed from theirs. This day, when Jesus made the paste and healed the man's blindness, was the Sabbath, the day of worship, the day that was set aside when they were to do no work. And so the Pharisees grilled him again, the Bible says, on how he had come to see. He'd already told the story once, now he tells it again. And he says, he put a clay paste on my eyes and I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, obviously this man, this Jesus fellow who did the healing, he can't be from God. He doesn't keep the Sabbath. In other words, he worked on the Sabbath. He applied medicinal help, as they would have perceived it, to heal this man. And they were offended about that. But others countered, how can a bad man do miraculous God revealing things like this? And there was a split in their ranks. So some of the Pharisees were highly critical. Others were doubtful, but open to the fact that maybe God was at work here. So they came back to the blind man. You're the expert. He opened your eyes. What do you say about him? You know, in a sense, the Pharisees were right here. The person who's the real expert is not the one who's done all the studying in the books. The person who is the real expert is the person who's experienced something. In this case, he had experienced the gift of sight. And the man said, speaking of Jesus, he is a prophet. The Jews, it says, didn't believe it. They didn't believe that the man was blind to begin with. In other words, they thought this was a staged faith healing, you know, that he had just faked blindness, worked with Jesus on setting this whole thing up, and now he was presenting himself as having been healed. So they want to get a witness. They called the parents of the man who was now bright-eyed with sight, and they asked them, is this your son, the one you say was born blind? They were thinking that maybe he just found somebody that looked like him and that this was all a forgery. So how is it that he now sees, they asked the parents. The parents said, we know that he's our son and we know that he was born blind, but we don't know how he came to see. We haven't a clue about who opened his eyes. And then they said, why don't you ask him? He's a grown man and can speak for himself. A little bit tongue in cheek there, wasn't it? His parents were talking like this because they were intimidated, it says, by the Jewish leaders who had already decided that anyone who took a stand that Jesus was the Messiah would be kicked out of the meeting place. They didn't want to have to deal with those consequences. And so they said, ask him. They didn't exactly cooperate with the Pharisees, but they did actually help out in this situation by referring them back to the person who actually experienced the healing. Ask him. He's a grown man. He can speak for himself. So they called the man back a second time, the man who had been born blind, and they told him, give the credit to God. We know that this man, Jesus, is an imposter. 
He replied, I know nothing about that one way or the other, but I know one thing for sure. I was blind, now I see. When you experience Jesus, when you have a relationship with him that is real and personal, you may not be able to explain it in theological terms or quote all the Bible references, but you know one thing for sure. I was blind spiritually, and now I see. I know who Jesus is. He changed me. Well, they said to this man, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And by this time, he's getting a little irritated. He says, I've told you over and over, and you haven't listened. Why do you want to hear it again? Are you so eager to become his disciples? With that, they all jumped all over him. You might be a disciple of that man, they said, but we're disciples of Moses. We know for sure that God spoke to Moses, but we have no idea where this man even comes from. The man who had been healed replied, now this is amazing. You claim to know nothing about him, but the fact is he opened my eyes. In other words, you say you know nothing about him and yet you know that he opened my eyes. The fact is he did it. It's well known that God isn't at the beck and call of sinners, but listens carefully to anyone who lives in reference and does his will. You know, as you live with God and for God, as you seek by his help to do his will in this world, he responds. You know, the Bible says that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. A righteous person who, who does what God wants in his life. And then the man who was blind said, now if this man, Jesus, didn't come from God, he wouldn't be able to do anything like this. Now they turn to insults. Have you ever noticed that when people have no good answer for an argument, they become insulting, they become abusive? They said, you're nothing but dirt. How dare you take this tone with us? And then they even border on violence. It says, they threw him out in the street. Now Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and he went and found him. And Jesus says to the man who had been blind, do you believe in the Son of Man? Isn't it interesting that Jesus often referred to himself as the Son of Man? We know that he's the Son of God, but he also wanted to make the point that he was truly human, as we are. And the man said to Jesus, Point him out to me, sir, so that I can believe in him. Now why did he say, Point him out to me? Because he'd never seen Jesus yet, had he? He'd never seen Jesus before because when Jesus put the mud on his eyes, he was still blind. He didn't regain his sight until after he went to the pool and washed his eyes. Jesus said, you're looking right at him. Don't you recognize my voice? And of course, the man did recognize his voice. Now he saw Jesus clearly. And he said, Master, I believe. Have you come to that point? where you've seen Jesus for who he really is, when you've put your faith in him, today can be your day. Do it right now where you are. Master, I believe, the man said. And he worshiped him. So the question for you is, do you believe? And do you worship him? Then Jesus said, I came into the world to bring everything into the clear light of day, making all the distinctions clear, so that those who have never seen will see. I'm so glad that not only does God offer healing to our physical infirmities, he heals our emotions and he heals our souls. Where we were spiritually blind, he helps us to see when we deal with unforeseen circumstances, things that we have never experienced before in our lives, he will guide us through. 
those who have made a great pretense of seeing will be exposed as blind, Jesus says. You know, people can pretend to be very wise, but if they don't know who Jesus is, they're only fooling themselves. Some Pharisees overheard, and they said, does that mean that you're calling us blind? Oh, they knew. They knew that Jesus was making the point about them. And Jesus said, if you were really blind, you would be blameless. In other words, if you were blind, that wouldn't be your fault. But since you claim to see everything so well, you're accountable for every fault and failure. You know, these are Jesus' words. I am so glad that Jesus is able to deal with us in any and every circumstance. He is with us all the way. You know that verse that we started with? This was God speaking. Yahweh said, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn darkness into light before them and make rough places smooth. These are the things that I will do. I will not forsake them. As you go into this week, this strange week, a week when you are self-isolating and have limited contact with other people in the outside world, remember, Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will be with you to the very end of the age. Well, that's our story for the day. Jesus, the one who healed the blind man, the one who will always be with us, speaks to you today. Words of comfort, love, truth, and peace. Receive his comfort today. I want to encourage you during these days to do what you can to touch the lives of others. You know, we can stay in touch today by phone, text, email, Facebook, all kinds of ways to connect. And though we can't connect in groups like we usually do, we can be a blessing to one another. And I encourage you to do that. I want to share with you the benediction that God gave to his people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Receive the peace of our Lord. Amen. You know, we're going to do something a little different today. When we meet together in the church building, we always take time to share our praises and our prayer requests. We call them God stories. Some of you may want to do that today by sending in a text requesting prayer or sending in a Facebook message. And I uh, will check the texts here in a moment. If you've sent in a request, we will pray for you. And uh, our technician, Craig, thank you, Craig, for all you've done. He's uh, checking Facebook, and if there are any messages coming in on Facebook that require prayer, we're going to pray for those as well. We're going to pray in just a moment. What we're going to do right now is we're going to turn off the, uh, the picture of me and, and we're going to give you a chance if you want to text us or send a Facebook message to do that. And then in just a moment, we're going to pray together. I'm going to lead you and I encourage you to join in prayer where you are. 